Hi everyone, Sil here, and welcome to this new guide into Star Wars Deal Republic 6.1. Now today's topic will be Mercenary Arsenal Combat Proficiency, which is a DPS burst pack for a mercenary. In today's topic we'll be talking about the gear set, tactical items, main statistics, amplifiers, min-maxing the stats in it, utility points, rotation, and in the end I'm gonna make a summary of the, of the class itself. To start off, the content I'm using this particular build for is the PvE. For the PvP I'm doing something else, I'm gonna probably make a separate video about the PvP aspect of it. Now, I use it for from Nightmare to Story Mode Operations, the flashpoints of all the levels, Uprising, etc. Basically everything in PvE. So, without further ado, let's get into the whole thing. The gear sets you want to go for on a mercenary in general as of 6.1 version of the game is the concentrated fire set. To make it fully work you need six pieces of it. There are a total of seven you can get from a vendor but it's the six pieces you wanna go for. Now what it gives you is the plus two mastery. Gaining a stack of supercharge increases your critical chance by 10% for 10 seconds. This effect can only occur once every 10 seconds. Doing the damage or healing an ally has 10% chance to build a supercharge. This can only occur once per 3 seconds. Activating supercharge gas makes your next rail shot or mag shot critically hit. There are a few ways to get yourself the concentrated fire set. One is for doing ludicrous amount of flashpoints, operations, opening the boxes etc. And the secondary way is going directly to the vendor on the fleet called Moro the Ripper. Bounty Hunter cut tacticals and set bonuses. He is located in supply section, right where the cursor is in my location. Once you interact with him, you just need to find yours, buy it for 3000 tech fragments, 1 million credits. I guess that's the easiest way to getting yourself that set, without relying on the random numbers generator that you're gonna drop it somewhere. And same as you could read on his description, you can do with your tacticals, the prime ignition, and thermonuclear fusion. Yeah, thermonuclear fusion is here. And the prime ignition is here. Yeah, there we go. I'm gonna get to the tacticals in just a moment. Once you got yourself your shiny nice little concentrated fire set with one piece of amplified champion, you have to get yourself a tactical item. Now for single target, you want to use primed ignition. Priming shot causes its target to burn, blazing bolts, heat seeker missiles and tracer missile all take its damage. And that's pretty much it for the single target's best in slot tacticals. If you however are on the ass duty, you're doing dailies with lots of targets, or flashpoints, you name it, multiple targets in general, you wanna get yourself the Thermal Nuclear Fusion. Fusion missile spreads your target's missile's hit signature to the targets it damages as long as it damages at least one target already affected by your hit signature. Hit seeker missiles fire additional missiles to nearby targets affected by your hit signature. So when you have a group of adds, you first fire your tracer missile to give the debuff to one of them then you use the fusion missile and then you use the heat seeker missiles which will spread. I will demonstrate now how exactly it works so you can have a visual how it actually works. Alright, now that I'm in the older and stronghold where we have conveniently three training dummies right next to each other, what we want to do is first fire the tracer missile and fusion missile. Tracer missile there you go, the debuff is there, now the fusion missile to spread the dot on the other dummies. After that, fire the heat seeker missiles and as you saw, additional rockets went on the other target. Let's just keep on going with them in combat. A little refresh. Okay, now again, tracer missile, then fusion missile to spread the dot and again, heat seeker missiles. That's the additional targets being hit. It's actually quite simple, you just need to follow those steps as their requirement, sort of, for it to work properly. Let's get back to Yavin. Alright, now that you know how to use your tacticals, both AoE and single target, 
let's go over the main statistics. This part will be about level 75 content. Now during making of this video, we're in Star Wars The Old Republic 6.1, where the only available level 75 content is the new expansion, so the planets of Onderon, Meshka, Operation on Daxon, that's a nature of progress, and the Meridian Flashpoint. Those are the only places you can use level 75 gear. I'm not talking over PvP, because they're obviously as well. But in PvE, those are the only places that you can use level 75 advantages. Let's go over the accuracy as first. First you want to go to have... You want to have accuracy at 110%. To achieve that, sp that percentage, you want to have this number from 1589 to 1591. This will give you the 110%. If you go above it, you're not gonna hit stuff harder, trust me. Uh, you're basically wasting those th th that precious statistic. You want to go as close to that number as I told you. If you go below, there is always a chance, a percentage chance, that you're gonna miss stuff. It can happen rarely, but it does happen. So be mindful of that. I, I noticed that many people are experimenting, going with 109, and they are kind of like a gambling if it's gonna help them or not. I prefer to go to always hit stuff without missing. Next one, accuracy. I'm going for around this number, 716, so that's the first step, basically. Uh, and ac accuracy works in steps. There's, there are tons of listed guides that can tell you uh, how alacrity works in the game now. It was pretty much like this for most of the time in the game, not that I remember. But now that's how it is. There are multiple steps you want to go on the alacrity. I will post a link in the description below of the source when I got some of the information. There's gonna be a nice graph how you can see which steps of alacrity you can have. You can have this what I have, you can have 1213, then you have 1800... Oh, my memory! I don't remember exactly. But like I said, you will have to document in the description below. Critical rating? Whenever I'm not going for those two statistics or the mastery, I'm going for the critical rating. In this particular build, the level 75 build, I have 1 accuracy argument, 3 alacrity, alacrity argument, 7 critical rating arguments, and 3 mastery arguments, just to achieve 3400 3, critical rating. Once we are over that, let's move on to level 70 content. Now, in everything on level 70 and below, is now hard capped. I'm talking about mastery, endurance, and power specifically. They are hard capped in everything below level 75, which is sort of a, you know, it breaks your head a little bit. So what it means is I have to each time switch the pieces I have here, which have the arguments with mastery in it. Because, I, I, like I just said, I don't get a benefit from it in level 70 content. Just a waste. So, what I do is I just switch those three elements, which I have mastery in, and I go for critical arguments. So, when it changes, I have one accuracy argument, three alacrity arguments, and ten remaining arguments I have in critical rating. Also, same thing applies to the relics. As you know, Shatek Relic of Serendipitus Assault, Mark 19, and the Relic of Fo Focused Retribution, Mark 19, gives you the following statistic. Healing an ally on damaging an enemy has a 30% chance to grant 2892 mastery for 6 seconds. This effect, this effect can occur once every 20 seconds. The same goes for the, for the Assault one, but it's, instead of uh, mastery, it gives you power. But as you can guess, you will not get a benefit from it in uh, level 70 content. So what I what I go for is I switch for Relic of Devastating Vengeance and Relic of Primeval Fate Sealer. Oh, actually I have the wrong rating one on this one. I've just grabbed them from my inventory, just for the sake of the showing. 
So this one increases your alacrity rating and the Devastating Vengeance increases your critical rating. The Devastating Vengeance works exactly as the two others but it gives you critical rating, which you actually get the benefit from. So that's why I go for the level 70 and below content. I switch the relics for those two which give me the statistic that I actually can benefit from. Right, now that we are over the main statistics you want to go for, let's go for what are those amplifiers in here. You can see in this video in your character sheet exactly every single amplifier you do have. For every sing single piece of gear you can have a combat, let's call it combat amplifier, you want to go with armor penetration for every single piece as you can see. That also applies to barrels on your blasters. They can also have the armor penetration. The highest bonus you can get is the 2.5% bonus. To get to that amplifier, you basically open the modification of your weapon or an armor piece. You click on the barrel, always the barrels and the armor rings and hilts for the dead eye and stuff, uh, will have the combat amplifiers. As you click on them, you can see. If you will recalibrate, remember each click costs you. And it's, the price increases with each click you do on recalibrate. It physically costs you. Not after you apply it, before you apply it, while you're recalibrating. It's like a lottery, basically. Let's, just for the sake of the video, gonna do one. There you go. It can go for all the potential amplifiers. Uh, there you go. Armor penetration. You have from green, blue, purple, and one single gold one. Where is it? Funny enough, it's missing from... Ah, because I have it, that's why it doesn't display. You get the picture. There is one difference in those amplifiers in the gear. As you can see, in each single piece of gear, it gives you like efficient archaeology. They are useful, don't get me wrong. But in this guide, we're focusing on combat, not on gathering, crafting, or some other gibberish. The combat amplifiers can be, like I said, once again, found in armorings or barrels. The other thing you can find it in is that's why where the Amplified Champion comes in handy. When you amplify the ampli Amplified Champion and you read the description, it says This equipment shell is enhanced with additional powerful amplifier opportunities up to the first prototype quality. And as you can see, over here, we don't have the archaeology or whatever efficiency, we again get the combat one. However, the highest one you can get in the potential amplifiers is, like it said in the description, prototype quality. And the top percentage you can get on it is 1. 1%, just like I have. Mine, mine are all maxed for what I can get on this character. I told you before, at the pretty much beginning of the video, when I was talking about the gear, why am I doing the Amplified Champion on either arm guards or a belt. As you know, those of you that play for some time, or even the newcomers, the belt and arm guards don't come with enhancements, they only have the armoring and mod. And remember about the other thing I told you about the concentrated fire set, that basically all three specs, the, combats, uh, the, the combat specs, can uh, use. The bodyguard healing mercenary, the innovative ordinaries dot spec, and the arsenal burst spec, the one we are using here. As you know, amplifiers, or maybe you don't yet, amplifiers can be costly at some point. So you want to recalibrate as little as possible. Unless you're swimming with money, then of course do whatever faults you boat, you know? Uh, what I do is when I have a piece like that, this amplified champion piece, because it's legacy bound, I can put in my legacy cargo, and give it to as any character I have in a burst spec on my whole account. Doesn't matter if it's a Jedi, a Sith, bounty hunter, trooper, stormtrooper, whatever, you name it. As long as it's a burst spec, this will work perfectly because that's exactly what you want on that specific character. That's why going with the belt and with the armor uh, and or with the arm guards because I don't have to switch the enhancements around, so that saves me a bit of money. This piece always stays the same. Let's now switch over to utilities. Now if we're talking about the utility points, I like to switch them around depending what, fi what fight I'm in. 
This what I have right right here, right now, is my general utility setup. That's when I'm, for example, too lazy to switch them every single time for whatever I'm doing. And this generally works for pretty much everything in a game. Apart from PvP, remember, we're talking about the PvE. So I'm going for Jet Escape, Boresites, Improved Vents, Power Barrier, Energy C Rebounder, Power Shield, Trauma Regulators, Cultal Surge, and Thrill of the Hunt. And like I said, this is the general one. Sometimes when I'm experimenting or I'm parsing or I want that extra, for example, a power surge, I'm going with power overrides instead of usually energy rebounder. Uh, generally, you can go for other stuff here if you know that you're not gonna be hit. I'm usually going for the defensives. Sometimes I switch something else around. I can get, for example, increases the duration of the hydraulic overrides by 4 seconds by using the torque boosters. I rarely do that, but I sometimes do. Uh, let me give an example. Last time I used it to make it fresh was the Fire Frost Uprising on Master when I was doing it solo. That's when I use it. Very, very handy because you don't get stunned that much when you have extended hydraulic override. Four seconds is a loss for it. Now, one of the most important things while setting up your utilities is not only blindly listening to the guides, including my own, is read the descriptions because sometimes you can find something interesting for you which will apply to whatever fight you're on. If you already know the fights or you know what to expect, you can switch something around. Like if I know that there will be no ads, for example, on a boss, let's say, let's talk flashpoints. Uh, the Foundry. The last boss, as you know, is the, the Jedi. I'm not gonna use the names because maybe some of you didn't play the game before doesn't know what the Jedi is. The last boss is a Jedi and he doesn't have a single ad. You don't have ads, ads over there. So why would I go for the boar signs, which increases the damage dealt by sweeping blasters, which is an AoE. I would rather go for something else. For example, uh, hmm, let me see. Missile blast immobilized targets for 4 seconds. No. Uh, you vent 20 hit when stunned, immobilized, knocked down, or otherwise incapacitated. Okay. Additionally, your, your next tech ability deals 10% extra damage or healing. Now, that would be much more useful than the boar sites for a single target fight where you have only one boss, for example. And uh, in that case, that Jedi I mentioned, he can immobilize you. And if he does, well, for free, you vent 20 heat. That's a good thing. You get the picture in general how you're supposed to set your utilities, so don't blindly follow the guides. Every single guide can be wrong. Mine, someone else's, doesn't matter. The essential is that you have to come up with what works for you. If, because every single one of us have a different playstyle, have different reflexes, and whatever, you name it. For example, a good example is the Thrill of the Hunt. Allows Unload, Blazing Bolts and Progressive Scan to be activated while moving. I actually do have friends, including myself actually, for some fights even I'm doing it. I don't choose this one if I don't have to move in the Flashpoint or an operation. If it's a pretty much static fight, I never use that one. Because why would I if I'm standing still? It's not gonna interrupt, because when it happens when I use it, the blazing balls I can just basically run while shooting, while if I don't have it, if I move, I interrupt my blazing bolts or unload in that case, yeah? You generally get the picture. So if you're lazy, like I am, you want to go with the general build I have over here, but I would strongly recommend you come up with something of your own that will work for you. So, start up reading on your utilities, maybe you can find something which, for example, you're missing. If you're, for example, stand for too long, use the hydraulics, you know. Now, before we're gonna go over the rotation and how to do damage on the mercenary arsenal, let's go over the min-maxing your gear. Specifically, the most difficult stuff to do, the mods. And I guess the armorings, because armorings are also sometimes hard to get the, the ones you want. So, if we're talking about the armorings and barrels, of course, 
they go by the same rule. You want to get superior versatile armoring 80 or superior versatile barrel 80. You also can get 80R1 because they have exactly the same statistic as the regular 80. Once you have that, go over mods. The best mod in slot of any gear, any piece of gear, is the lethal superior mod 80R2. You can drop it from flashpoints, operations, whatever, crates, you name it, yeah? However, what I noticed with my friends is that the drop rate of that one is very low, it's very difficult to get that one, especially that you in total need 9 pieces of it, 9 mods like this, and there are loads of mods, the B mods, uh, the R goes from ATR1 to as high as ATR20, that's how many, that, it's like buttloads of mods, trust me, yeah, just in 306, so this is the best in slot, and it goes for all the specs of all the classes in a game, apart from the tanks for kind of obvious reasons. You don't want to go with a tank. Uh, the assassin is sort of an exception, but that's for a different video. Yeah? For DPSs and healers, in a whole game, you want to go with ATR2. That's the best what you can get. Now, there is, however, a priority. Also, because the ATR2 is very hard to get. And the priority goes as follows. The most important is ATR2. Then, the ATR3. ATR1. ATR5. And finally, ATR4. The rest, the differences are kind of marginal between each, between each other. Those are the top five, sort of, which you can get. Lethal 80, regular super, lethal superior mod 80 is also good. I don't have it. Funny enough, I don't have it anymore. But it's also good. That's the RTR6. So that's the priority on the mods, which you're getting, you want to follow in the gear. All right. The next stage we're going to be talking about is the rotation. First, let's see what I have on the interface. Those two quick bars have a specific task. This is my priority rotation, and this is my opener, when I use at the beginning of the fight. I did a tutorial on what the priority rotation is, and you should have it now popping as a link in top right screen. In a prior priority rotation, I have priming shot, heat seeker missile, rail shot, electronet, blazing bolts, tracer missile, rapid shots as a filler, However, I still use Tracer Missile as a filler if my heat is below 20. And once we went over that, this is the most important, least important. Easy, easy. Let's start going, going over the skills. Priming Shot. You basically want to use as often as possible. When it's on a, off the cooldown, you wanna use it. Main reason, if we're talking about damage, main reason is the, your tactical that you're using. Because as you remember when we've been reading it previously, priming shot causes its target to burn. And basically all, all your main damage abilities, they trigger that little dot that it has. Second thing it does, let's actually go over the description which is in there. Fires a priming shot that deals X amount of damage, weapon damage. And if it successfully hits the target, allows your next tracer missile to activate instantly. Let's go over the tracer missile real quick. As you see, it's a cast of 1.4 seconds. Trust me, that's a lot of damage if you pause it for that much. No, that's a lot of damage! So, if you can have it instant, why not? Let's just demonstrate it right now. Priming shot, boom. Tracer missile procced. And I have it instant. No ch no casting, no nothing. All hunky-dory and happy. Let's replace our dummy with a new one. Stop burning, come on. Thank you. Alright, basically that's what, one of the main reasons why you want to use priming shot non-stop, because you have that tactical. Second is the heat seeker missile. Fires several missiles that deal this amount of kinetic damage. This damage is increased by 25% if the target is affected by your heat signature. Let's remember that the heat signature is given by tracer missile. Now before you ask any questions, because, wait, what well, you don't have a heat signature at this stage, because you haven't used the tracer missile yet. No. Remember, we have the opener. I'm gonna go over the opener in a bit. Yeah? 
And that's basically it's what you want to know about the Heat Shaker Missile. You also want to use it as often as possible. When it's off the cooldown, you want to use it. Unless you have, of course, Prime you shot off the cooldown. Then use it first, then use the Heat Shaker Missile. If Prime Shot is not available, use it. Now next stage. Royal Shot. As you see, it's unusable for now. Target not vulnerable. That's the vulnerability that the Tracer Missile description was talking about. Yeah? What it says is, fires a very powerful shot at the target that deals X amount of damage, weapon damage, only usable against incapacitated targets or targets suffering from periodic damage. So if you have a dot on a target, or even your friend applied a dot on a target, then you have the rail shot available. Like I said, it doesn't have to be your dot, but it has to have a dot on it. Now, there's another catch. Not only this is a catch, there's another one. When you use Tracer Missile, it builds up Tracer Lock stacks, which is gonna show up in your buff bar. It is like a red guy being shot in a chest, kind of. And it builds up to five stacks, and that's where the rail shot comes in. You want to use the rail shot only at five stacks, because five stacks makes it crit always. It's always gonna crit when it's at five stacks. Dealing approximately 40 to 4 to even 50k damage. That's all the numbers I've seen so far, actually. Let's actually test a theory, so you know what I mean. Okay, let's build up the stacks. There you go, that's the icon. Tracer lock, 4. Boom. At 5, it procs, and we have it. Let's now see what the damage is gonna be. Yeah, 40 plus that thousand something k. So minimum of 40k of a Chris. When you use the uh, Tracer Missile normally, uh, Rail Shot normally, it's not gonna be that high, obviously. Also, remember, I'm not using the dummy with uh, any sort of debuff. Let's see. Okay, there you go. Let's use the Rail Shot. <laughs> 16k. Now you see the difference between no stacks, or two stacks in that case, and five stacks. Alright, that's pretty much it about the Rail Shot. You want to use it on the cooldown as well. If you don't have primary shot and heat seeker available and you have the five stacks, use it. If you have those two available, use those first. Now next is the Electronet. Fires an Electronet that encernars the target, reducing its movement speed by 50% and dealing X amount of damage, energy damage, over 9 seconds while affected. A target that moves 20% more damage from Electronet. And this effect can stack up 10 times on enemy players or 5 times on any other target. Additionally, Electronet hinders the target, preventing the use of high mobility actions and escapes as uh, such charges vanishes and speed boosts last 9 seconds. That's pretty much it. You use the Electronet as often as you can, with respe while respecting the priority over here, of course. Yeah. Next thing, we got Blazing Bolts, with the cooldown of 14 seconds. Range 30 meters, like pretty much everything on a mercenary has a range of 30 meters. Fires a continuous blaze of blaster bolts at the target, dealing X amount of damage, weapon damage, and generating 20 heat over the duration. Weak and standard enemies caught in the blaze of bolts are stunned for the duration requires two blasters. Very simple, right? Now, if we have a target, if we have a dummy, let's say it's a boss, and you're using the blazing bolts, you want to use them often, but as you see it has that nasty little cooldown. That's where priming shot comes in handy together with tracer missile. Now check what's gonna happen with the cooldown. Boom. It instantly refresh and I can use blazing bolts again. That's exactly why Tracer Missile is so important in your rotation, yet so actually far back in the priority list. Now, to refresh your Blazing Bolts with the Tracer Missile, there is a catch. You can do it while using Tracer Missile only every 8 seconds. So let's say I'm gonna use the uh, Blazing Bolts now. Gonna refresh it with Tracer Missile real quick. And I use it again just to make it on cooldown. Then if I use it again with because it's within eight seconds, nothing happens. And then 
Boom, again it happens, right? Because the gap was 8 seconds. Let's do it again. It's less than 8 seconds. Nothing happens. If I wait over for the 8 seconds since I used it, it actually cleans it, the, 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 the cooldown of it. Very handy. At some point, you're gonna get the feel of it. You're gonna feel, you're gonna notice uh, when you can use the tracer missile effect most effectively. Yeah? Usually, if you get used to that rotation, it's gonna click. When you get enough practice on the dummy or in fights in general, it's gonna click. You're gonna start to be to, to notice the whole thing. The whole flow. You can remember also help yourself with power surge. For those that don't know or don't read all the abilities, your next ability used within 15 seconds with an activation time will activate instantly and then grant immunity to push back and interrupts for 6 seconds. So basically any ability which is casted, like Tracer Missile in that case, is instant. Uh, actually, for the sake of uh, demonstration, let's use it. Boom, there you go, power surge. Tracer Missile, Priming Shot is not used. Boom, it's instant anyway. Now it's on the cooldown. We're waiting, hunky dory. You can use it every now and then. You're gonna also have a feel when you can use it. Because sometimes not, 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 cause that's the only thing you're gonna be using it for. Unless last rescue attempt on the flashpoint operation, bleeding profusely, you don't know what to do, have all your cooldowns down or something. I don't know, let's make it more dramatic. You can use this and then your rapid scan also becomes instant. Anywho, anyhow, let's keep on moving the rotation. Next stop is the Tracer Missile. Launches a missile at the target that deals X amount of kinetic damage, sunders the target that leaves hit signature on them, sundered targets have their armor reduced by 20% for 45 seconds, hit signatures leave targets vulnerable to rail shot and increases the damage they take from hit seeker missiles for 45 seconds. Woo. Where's the dot spiral? Ah, there they are. Never mind, I never have said anything. Uh, pretty much what it says. Gives hit 15. That's why at the beginning, when we started talking about the rotation, I said that I use it as a filler only when my heat is 20 or below. If I'm gonna start using it as a filler above 20, my heat will start to build up pretty fast. And I don't want that for obvious reasons, yeah? Because as long as I have those two, I can somehow manage. But they have cooldown of nearly two minutes, which makes it kind of difficult. Now, all the other things uh, I think I went through in that rotation, why the Tracer Missile is so important, yeah? Because basically many skills actually rely on it. Rail Shot relies on it, on its 5 stacks of uh, Tracer Lock. Blazing Bolt relies on it to refresh the cooldown, so you can have it off the cooldown. Uh, Hitseeker Missiles relies on it because it gives you the extra 20%, uh, well, no, 25% uh, if your hit signature is up, yeah? Everything is kind of, you know, connected together. That's also the whole point of a rotation after all, yeah? Rapid shots, well, not much explanation. This is your basic attack on a mercenary in general. Doesn't matter which spec you're on. Fires a quick stream of bolts causing X amount of weapon damage. No heat, no nothing, you just fire at the thing. That's all. There's nothing special about it. Yep. Yeah. Right, next. When we need the rotation, let's go over the opener. First, this is here as a reminder. Yeah? Because before each fight, you want to build the stacks of supercharge. You don't want to go without a fight without building up your stacks. You always want them. And. When you have 10 stacks, you get supercharged gas. Requires and converts 10 stacks of supercharge to vent 10 heat and increase armor penetration by 10% for 8 seconds while it's active. Deals damage dealt by tracer missile, hit seeker missiles, blazing bolts and priming shot grants supercharged velocity which increases all accuracy by 1%. This effect cannot occur more than once per second and can stack up three times. 
very useful, very handy. Also remember, 10 stacks are also required for supercharged celerity. It requires and converts 10 stacks of supercharge to issue supercharged celerity to you and your operation group members or flashpoint within 40 meters, increasing all accuracy by 10%, last 10, se 10 seconds. This is essentially your raid cooldown. You're gonna hear your railiers calling it out, or someone else, depending what group you have. I have an exemplary uh, rotation, as in a six and a half million dummy, me hitting it hard. I recorded it as well for you guys, it's gonna be placed a little bit later, maybe on the separate video, the full like thing about it. So let's go over again through the opener. Tracer Missile is the first. As you see, no buffs, no nothing, let's just uh, actually build a supercharge, yeah? I'm gonna try to make it as slow as possible, I just hope that the Operation Training Dummy will not disappear on me. First, Tracer Missile because you can cast it, because you're still not in combat while you're using it. When you use a tracer missile, you launch immediately your uh, advanced attack adrenal, increases power by 1005 and reduces all healing done by 20%, last 15 seconds. Typical adrenal. If you are on the level 70 and below content, you're using different, different adrenal, you're using advanced carprax critical adrenal. The same thing, just critical instead of power. Because if you remember what I said, you do not benefit from power in level 70 and below content. At all. It's just a waste of adrenal, which are frankly quite expensive. Then you have supercharged gas, so you're essentially launching those two at the same time. Remember, supercharged gas, for example, does not suffer from global cooldown. For those that don't know yet, this like wave sort of, of a cooldown wave that goes through my skills this is the global cooldown and the supercharged gas ignores it completely it doesn't apply to it there are a few skills that you can use actually that do ignore the the whole thing including the adrenal med packs and mo most of the defensive cooldowns anyway let's keep continuing so we have our supercharged gas already on during on the use that's not being used i have to consume it with, with pressing this button let's say then we go with priming shot that applies the nasty debuff when we already have the uh, hit signature vulnerability and stuff and so on we applying this one then the target starts burning then we're going to hit sicker mi missiles because we already have all the debuffs we could get from the tracer missile and the priming shot so we're using the heat seeker missiles, then we're adding up to the furnace with Electronet, making it an even more miserable target. Then we go over to the brazing bolts. After that, uh, we still gonna have procced tracer missile once we get to that stage. So it's gonna be instant. That's when I do a next thing. I launch the power surge, so the second tracer missile because this will not yet refresh our blazing bolts, but the second one will, because it's already going to be a gap of 8 seconds. Should be. Yeah, in general. From using the blazing bolts, yeah? Uh, also, it will refresh your rail shot. I mean, not refresh, sorry. It will also uh, build up uh, 5 stacks already of your rail shot. Yeah, because that gives 2, that gives 4, that gives extra 2, make it 5. Uh, then you can use your blazing bolts again. And once you are on that stage, you can follow with your primary rotation. At that stage, because we're still in the beginning stages of the fight, the first available will become Heat Seeker Missile just before priming shot. So you can do two things. Either use your filler, the rapid shots, or your Tracer Missile. That will make not only refresh again blazing bolts fast enough, but also heat seeker missiles will be off the cooldown. So you can use this, then you follow follow up. I'm gonna show you now a small bit of the rotation with using the actual opener, just without burning the uh, adrenal. Actually, let's turn on the star parts. All right, now that we have star parts on, let's check if I have all my. Uh, buffs and whatever, and the uh, steam's ready, 
keep observing this place where the numbers are. While I'm going the... I'm gonna get it as close to the quick as possible. You can rewind that piece of the video if you want to focus on what I'm clicking. I specific That's one of the reasons why I enabled the mouse, so you can see exactly what I'm doing. I'm gonna be doing it at normal speed, because if I don't, it's not gonna follow up properly. So just keep observing what I'm doing. 10 stacks, 10 stacks. Very good. That goes one more just to quit the whole thing. Tracer missile. Let's go. That's pretty much it after the opener. As you notice, at its peak, with low crits, because I didn't have much crits. Uh, at its peak, it was, I think, when I looked over, that was around 26k. Sometimes it can jump up to 34k, and then I'm really happy, because my uh, burst, the initial burst, is very spiky. Also remember, during that opener, if you have proper stats, of course, yeah, you were building up really high threat, and that can give a tank a headache. When we're doing the uh, operations and we're teaching new people how to tank for example and they're still not utilized fully with the tank, I have a tendency to pull uh, to pull aggro from the tank in, at the beginning of the fight. That's where the no touchy touchy tactic comes in. The no touchy touchy means that basically the operation starts, I wait for first three to five seconds in operation then I'm starting with my opener so I don't pull the aggro. And yes, I do use Chaff Flare, which is my uh, uh, threat reducing cooldown, on non stop, basically on a cooldown. Obviously, not at the beginning because I don't have threat, so if I use it now, it's a waste. I usually use it at around when I get to the Electronet before the Blazing Balls, that's what I use it. Because usually, depending on how skilled the tank is, that's where I'm starting to pull an aggro. If you're tank, uh, if you're DPSing, Alongside the tank for some time, you're gonna start to get to notice where are you pulling aggro from him. If it's a good tank with proper rotation and lots of experience, you're not gonna pull an aggro from a tank. Don't worry about it. But if you have slightly less experience or learning tank, you're gonna pull aggro, guaranteed. But like I said, in my experience, mostly I pull around this stage in the opener. That's when I pop the chaff flare to avoid it, because by the, by the time I get to the tracer missile, the boss is already on me. <laughs> right. So that's pretty much everything about the rotation. All the tricks I could find myself. And generally, it should get you to an average of 22, 23k DPS on a 6.5 million dummy. That's the, for those that don't know, this is the amount of health you apply to dummy if you're doing parsing uh, for training reasons. Usually, you're supposed to, for the requirement, you're supposed to parse that dummy under 5 minutes in 6.1. And if you're doing it in under 5 minutes and you're not using the star parse, that's a, that's okay. Because if you're doing under 5 minutes, you're, you're good. You're gonna be really good. I'm gonna show, go over that real quick. This is <clears throat> Training Dummy Advanced Health Modulator. Only 1000 credits at the vendor. See, now the dummy has a health of 6.5 million. Second thing, while you're practicing for operations, training dummy armor reduction module. And there you go. Now the dummy is prepared for you to parse on it until you cry yourself to sleep uh, while trying to achieve the numbers uh, that are required for your nightmare team that you're trying to go for. <laughs> That's of course a joke, which is partially a true. A true. I sp sometimes I spend it hours and hours on end on a dummy, and people are like surprising, it's like, oh, why you sit on a dummy so much? That's gonna make that big of a difference. And then when you go into an operation, oh, how you do lots of damage? I practice. All right, now that we're on this th this part, uh, I will insert in this video at the end of it, after I do the whole explanation at the end of it, or maybe in the other video. We'll see in the editing. Uh, I will insert my full parsing on the 6.5 million damage, which I'm gonna do in a minute. I will insert so you can see how it clicks, what's gonna be the average damage you're gonna end up with. Now, so basically now let's do the summary of the 
of the what we just learned. My thoughts on it. Mercenary Arsenal, if you go on parsley.io, yeah, this is the website where you can find global numbers of DPSs, healers, you name it, uh, on the planets that do use the website, do upload their combat logs onto that website. There's a lot of people there, trust me. If you go to stats over there, you will notice that the mercenary arsenal is very low. It's literally the lowest spec in terms of DPS if you sort it by the average in the dummy that everyone is using, the 6.5 million one. Yeah? You're gonna notice that it's at its lowest. There is no worse DPS spec than Arsenal. However, and you're gonna hear that a lot if you ask on the fleet. Uh, maybe fleet is a bad example because people t tend to say lots of stuff on the Imperial fleet and Drummond Cass. If we're talking about the game mechanics, yes, this is the most handicapped DPS spec as of now. The most meta as of the time of making this video is the Sniper Virulence. So if you want to crunch the numbers as high as possible, high as possible, go with the Vira and Sniper, not the Arsenal. However, if you guys go watch at least some parts of my uh, operations, like Carmel's Nightmares, whatever, in many of those fights I do have my uh, star parts open over here uh, on the recording. You will notice I always pull up the top DPS, because first of all, if you like the class, if you feel the class, and like I said, you generally like it, yeah? And you read on the skills what they do, what to expect from them, your utilities, uh, your rotation, whatever, and so on and so forth, you're gonna be eventually good at it. You just need enough practice. You already have half of it. You already like the class. You already, you know, do stuff with it. If you follow up, if you practice, you're gonna be good regardless what others say, yeah? Because what I just said, the average person, people do on this class is around 20k, the lowest of all the specs. But if you look at my parse, uh, parsings, which you're gonna see at the end of the video, like I said, it's much above it. It's nearly 23k, or even above it in some cases when I'm lucky. So, like I said, it also depends on the player and how hard is it is to achieve those numbers by doing a good rotation. Remember guys, there is no perfect rotation. I already said it in the priority rotation video. Uh, there is no perfect rotation. You can always improve something in your rotation. This is why I can crush, crunch my numbers the highest by using Mercenary Arsenal. That's pretty much everything I have for you now. In a moment you will see a full parse on 6.5 million dummy using settings and rotation I just showed you. But as for guide itself, that's everything I had for you today. Leave a like if you like it and also consider subscribing for more future content like this. See you next time. Bye.